Hello, welcome to Irving Singh Academy. Uh, we are discussing polynomial and this is lecture number 4. I hope you have already watched part 1 to part 3 before watching this part 4. In this lecture, I am going to discuss about factorization of polynomial. So, how to factorize the polynomial and uh, that I am going to discuss here. So, without wasting time, uh, let me remind you what we had discussed in the previous lecture and thereafter uh, we will uh, continue the same. We have uh, discussed in previous lecture that factor theorem and factor theorem it was stated that uh, if uh, px be any polynomial and x minus a is a linear factor such that p a is equal to 0 then x minus a is a factor of uh, uh, polynomial. So let me write here again that factor theorem. Topic is factorization of polynomial <coughs> polynomials this is the topic which i am going to discuss today and uh, factorization of polynomials now uh, here uh, in this topic first i am going to remind you what we had learned in the previous lecture that is factor theorem factor theorem and uh, in this theorem uh, we had discussed that if px be any polynomial, if px be any polynomial, px be any polynomial, polynomial, and uh, x minus a is a linear polynomial, polynomial such that such that p a is equal to 0 then x minus a is a factor of is a factor of polynomial polynomial p x right this is what so we can write it because uh, we have learned that dividend is equal to and therefore we can write p x is equal to q x into x minus a where q x is quotient quotient right now q x is quotient remember here r x that is the remainder polynomial is zero that if it is a factor then remainder a shall be zero a remainder polynomial <coughs> a remainder polynomial is always zero right now a remainder R x is always 0. Remember, maybe R x or anything. So, here uh, this is the factor theorem, and we will uh, use this to find solutions of questions. And uh, let me remind you um, some questions what we had discussed in the previous uh, class that uh, there are factors here x. If I put x is equal to 1 by 2 and it becomes 0 and then whether they are factor of naught like that this is question so if i put some constant and it becomes zero then we can say they are factors and if it is not equal to zero then they are not factors so like that what we did and uh, in now today uh, we are looking for this, uh, factorization of polynomial so we will use this fact and uh, we will uh, use this fact and uh, solve some questions. So let us start some questions which is given in your exercise. There is a, not a big deal in this because you know everything and so I am looking for questions here only. And there another concept uh, which we will discuss today that is a splitting middle term. So a splitting middle term before discussing question let me uh, write this. This one is splitting. A splitting middle term. So this is what we have to learn splitting middle term. Factorization by we can write factorization by factorization by splitting method. Splitting method. And what is that? In that method, you have to split the middle term. For example, if I have x square plus 4x plus 12 say our 4x plus 3 
then uh, how to split this one is middle term this one is described as middle term right now and this is for quadratic polynomial only remember middle term x for quadratic polynomial only polynomial right not for all others cubic and by quadratic polynomial so this will work for uh, quadratic polynomial and that is middle term here so this middle term has 4x and 4x is what how to split them so that um, that will be a factor so the method is multiply first and third first and third together you will uh, get 3x square now uh, multiply this is the step one that multiply first and third term multiply first and third term multiply first and third term third term that is you can consider coefficient of coefficient of coefficient of of x square and constant term constant term right this is coefficient of x square and constant term along with x can be taken also because there is no problem so if i do that then what will happen that will be 3x square now step 2 factorize the middle term factorize the middle term the coefficient of middle term coefficient of middle term in such a way in such a way in such a way that their product is their product is equal to 3x square right now that is 3 only because uh, coefficient is 3 so factorize the middle term that will coefficient is equal to 3 and uh, their sum is equal sum or difference and their sum or difference is equal to equal to the middle term middle term right so what i can do here here coefficient is 3 only na? coefficient is 3 only so we will look for coefficient only coefficient of is 3 only even though you will take a I am just writing this coefficient, uh, taking coefficient for sake of convenience. Otherwise, 3x square is also okay. I'll deal with this. Why so? <clears throat> so here, middle term is 4. Here, middle term, coefficient of middle term, coefficient of middle term is 4. Right? So we can take it like middle term is 4 which has factors like 4 into 1 and 2 into 2 right but uh, product of 2 and 2 4 into 1 middle term coefficient of middle term is 3 now so that will be factor of 3 is factor of 3 is equal to product is equal to 3 right uh? So 3 can have factor only 3 into 1. There is no other factor. Right. So 3 into 1. We will check whether coefficient of middle term is 4. And we will check the this the 3 into 1. That is 3. And sum of 3 plus 1 is 4. So we will uh, split them 4 as 3 into 1. And therefore it can be written as x square. The middle term can be written as that middle term 4x can be written as can be written as written as 3x plus x right now 3x plus x 
this process is called splitting middle term because single term is split into two term and here one term two term so this process is called splitting middle term and after that you will take common step three is there step three now take commons take common from first two term first two terms and last two terms two terms first two terms and last two terms suitably last two terms suitably right now and uh, you will get the answer so <clears throat> here what will happen for example in this question uh, I can write this x square plus 3x plus x plus 3 is equal to 0 so in that case x can be taken out of these first two terms x is only common so we can take x common x plus 3 is left in these two there is nothing common and wherever there is nothing common you can take a one common so if you take one common then x plus 3 will left out now x plus 3 in both of them is common so x plus 3 can be taken out and x is left from here and 1 is left from there and that will be equal to 0 so if this was polynomial then these are the two factors so we can say x plus 3 x plus 3 and x plus 1 are two factors of are two factors of factors of px and therefore px can be written like x plus 3 and x plus 1 px was what that was x square plus 3x plus 1 and that can be written as x square plus 3x plus 1 and that can be written as x3 so it was x square plus 4x plus 3 so I can write x square plus 4x plus 3 so I can write x plus 3 and x plus 1 these are the two factors so I hope you got it now uh, let us solve some questions and uh, the questions which is given here in your book that is exercise 2.4 so here I am looking for the questions which is given in exercise 2.4 so 2.4 is the exercise I am looking for and uh, these questions are given like determine first question and determine which of the following which of the following polynomials has polynomials has x plus 1 a factor has x plus 1 of factor. factor now the first question uh, in this uh, category sub questions is x cube plus x square plus x plus 1 so to check whether x plus 1 is a factor or not there are two methods in which we can deal with right now so we can uh, so that there are factors or you can put x is equal to minus 1 and and if it becomes 0 then it will be a factor so using factor theorem using factor theorem factor theorem we can put x plus 1 is equal to 0 that is x is equal to minus 1 x plus 1 is equal to 0 this employee x is equal to minus 1 and putting x is equal to minus 1 in polynomial putting x is equal to minus 1 in polynomial x cube plus x square plus x plus 1 we get what we get we get x uh, is equal to x cube this is minus 1 whole cube plus minus 1 whole square plus minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 whole cube is minus minus 1 whole square is plus 1 and that is minus 1 and plus 1 so now 2 minus 2 is cancel this cancel this cancel and it is 0 and since x minus 1 is 0 
and therefore x plus 1 is a factor of polynomial factor of polynomial so this is the way in which you can check it x cube plus x square plus x plus 1 if you want uh, to show it by alternate method then you can also go with the other uh, way that is alternative method alternative method because there is no uh, mention here it is not mentioned that in which method you should proceed so you can take your own decision that what you have to do so if i will take x square from here it will be x plus 1 if I there is nothing common so as I said if there is nothing common you can take x is equal to 1 and 1 can be taken common and if I take x plus 1 both the factors then what will happen there will be x square plus 1 so clearly x plus 1 is a factor of this polynomial clearly x plus 1 is a factor is a factor right now so you can take your any uh, one of the method it is a chance you can deal with right now and let us uh, discuss some more questions now similarly there is a second part of the question that is x4 plus x cube plus x square plus x plus 1 if i'll put x is equal to minus 1 then what will happen put x is equal to minus 1 you will have minus 1 to the power 4 plus minus 1 to the power q plus minus 1 to the square plus minus 1 plus 1 which will come here 1 because power is even then 1 and this is odd so negative and this is positive and this is negative and plus 1 so these two are cancels these two are cancels but 1 is left which is not equal to 0 and therefore x plus 1 is not a factor not a factor of polynomial factor of polynomial right now so you can do it anyway uh, there is no problem now let us see the question number third third part of first question and in third part what is that try to understand it is given again x4 plus 3x square plus 3x plus x plus 1 again to check it put uh, x is equal to minus 1 and you will have here minus 1 to the power 4 is 1 and 3 into minus 1 whole square is 1 and 3 into minus 1 that is minus 3 and this is minus 1 right now and that is plus 1 plus 1 minus 1 cancel and that will be 1 plus 3 minus 3 they will be also cancel so what is left 1 which is not equal to 0 and therefore x plus 1 is not a factor of not a factor of x4 plus 3x square plus 3x plus x plus 1 right so i hope you got it now next question question number 4 is there and what is that try to understand so fourth question is given here x cube minus x square minus x minus x into 2 plus root 2 plus root 2 this way this is the fourth question and i have to put x is equal to what x is equal to minus 1 so again put x is equal to minus 1 you will get here minus 1 whole cube and minus 1 whole square minus 1 whole square and if i put here minus 1 that is 2 plus root 2 plus root 2 then this will be minus 1 right hand and that will be minus 1 whole square is 1 so it is still also minus 1 this minus minus plus and 2 plus root 2 and that is also root 2 so what will happen finally in that case this will be 1 plus 1 is 2 and this minus 2 and plus 2 will cancel out you know and root 2 plus root 2 is 2 root 2 which is not equal to 0 and therefore x plus 1 is not factor of this polynomial therefore x plus 1 is not a factor of factor of polynomial x cube minus x square minus 2 root 2 into x plus root 2 it is not a factor so i hope you got it isn't it so second question is there and that question is given describe about 
the second question let us see the second question what they say in this question uh, it is said that huge factor theorem again it is clearly instructed huge the factor theorem factor theorem right to determine whether to determine whether determine whether whether <coughs> gx is factor of px gx is a factor of px gx is factor of px in each of the following cases in each of the following cases following cases Right now, each of the following cases, and the first one is given here. That question is p x is equal to two x q plus x square minus two x minus one, and g x is equal to x plus one. So, using factor theorem, if I want to prove, then put x plus one is equal to zero, and that is x is equal to minus one. Putting this value in px, so putting this x is equal to minus one in px, and so the now p of minus one x is equal to minus one I have put here, and two into minus one whole cube plus minus one whole square minus two into minus one minus one, and this is minus one whole cube is minus one multiplied by two minus two. Minus one whole square is plus one, and minus minus plus two, and that is minus one. So two and minus two cancel, one and minus one cancel, so it is zero. And therefore, here x plus one is a factor. That is g x is a factor of p x. So here we can say g x is a factor of factor of p x. Isn't it? Now in next question. See, there is a question. P x given, P x is given as x cube plus three x square plus three x plus one, and g x is given as x plus two. So to find, put g x is equal to zero. That is x plus two is equal to zero, and x is equal to minus two. So now p of minus two. Put here minus two. You will get this minus two whole cube plus three into minus two whole square plus three into minus two plus one, and you will get this that minus two whole cube will be what? Tell me, minus eight, and this is a four. Three into four is twelve. Three into two is six plus one. Now there are positive terms. Twelve plus one thirteen. Negative terms. Eight plus six is minus fourteen. Which is minus one. That is not equal to zero, and hence g x is not a factor of, not a factor of what? Not a factor of p x. I hope you got it. Okay. Now the next question is here, and the question is third question. How to deal with this third question? Third question is given. P x is equal to x q minus 4 x square plus x plus 6, and g x is also given here. That uh, g x is equal to given like x minus 3. So again, put g x is equal to 0. That is x minus 3 is equal to 0. That is x is equal to 3. Putting this value of 3 in p x. And therefore, p three is equal to three q minus four into three square plus three plus six, and that is twenty seven minus four into nine plus three six twenty seven plus three thirty plus six thirty six and nine four ja thirty six. So positive terms are thirty six. Negative terms are also 36, so it is zero, and therefore x minus 3 is a factor of p x, and therefore x minus 3 is a factor of 
factor of px that is gx is a factor of px factor of px now looking for third question and uh, it is given that find the value of k value of k value of k if x minus 1 is a factor of px is a factor of px right is a factor of ps each in of the in each of the following cases each of the following following cases right the first part of this question is given here that is question number one and this is given here px is equal to px is equal to x square plus x plus k and x minus 1 is a factor since if x minus 1 is a factor x minus 1 is a factor then p1 definitely will be 0 then by putting x is equal to 1 p1 it must be equal to 0 and uh, therefore p1 is what putting x is equal to 1 this employee 1 square plus 1 plus k must be equal to 0 that is 2 plus k is equal to 0 and therefore k is equal to minus 2 and that will be answer similarly uh, in second part of the question we can have a second part of the question and second part is there that uh, px is given 2x square plus k x plus root 2 again in the same thing same dialogue you write x minus 1 is a factor then p1 must be equal to 0 and here p1 is equal to what 0 this employee putting p1 is equal to 0 it means put here uh, 2 into 1 square plus k into 1 plus root 2 is equal to 0 that will be 2 plus k plus root 2 is equal to 0 and therefore k is equal to what minus 2 minus root 2 or you can if you take negative sign common then this will be negative sign of 2 plus root 2 and that will be answer now third question third part of this question is let me write third part and third part is px is equal to kx square minus root 2x plus 1 again same thing you write p1 and if p1 is equal to 0 then you may, must write this line i am not writing here again and again k into 1 square minus root 2 into 1 plus 1 is equal to 0 and that will be here k will be left only and this uh, root 2 will be that side it will be positive root 2 and 1 will be negative so that will be the answer now the fourth part of this question is there is one more part and i would like to discuss here and uh, this one is nothing else but uh, given here px is equal to 3x square minus x minus no, kx square sorry kx square k times of x square and uh, minus 3x plus k again there are 2k so again if p1 is equal to 0 this employee 1 into x square k into in place of x i have to put 1 and so this will be k into 1 square minus 3 into 1 plus k is equal to 0 and this employee k plus k become 2k that will be here it will be k plus k and this k and this 3 will come this side it will be this positive so 2k is equal to 3 and k is equal to 3 by 2 that is answer so you write like this i hope you got it end it now the next one is <coughs> Let me start with new page. 
question number four question number four is given here factorize factorize you know so factorize this uh, even factorize can be written like in this also factorize first one is 12 x square minus 7 x plus 1 as I told you about the splitting middle term the first and third to be multiplied here and product will be 12 into 1 that is 12 now 12 to be factorized in break into 12 into 1 and 6 into 2 3 into 4 isn't it but uh, which two sum has 7 or difference of 7 6 plus 2 is 8 and 6 minus 2 is 4 but we are looking for middle term 3 plus 4 is 7 yes this work so that is why we will split them 12 x square minus 4 x minus 3 x so that it will be minus 7 x and plus 1 that is what we can do now out of these first two term we can take maximum common 4 x taking common means you need to divide the factor by 4 x so 12 divided by 4 is 3 and out of x square if you divide by x 1x is left since i have taken 4x common so 4x divided by 4x and what is left 1 now here nothing is common so we can take one common and since we are taking one common the sign of inside bracket will change because minus minus plus now we can take 3x minus 1 common from these two and what is left here 4x minus 1 and these are factors so i hope you got it now the next question is here in this one let us see the next question is given here 2x square plus 7x plus 3 again if we multiply first and third here what we can do multiply first and third you are getting here so 2 into 3 is 6 now we have to split them such that their product is 7 middle term to be split such that their sum will be 7 can be written as what 7 can be written as 6 into 1 that is 6 and 7 so this can be 7 x can be written as 6 x 6 into 1 that is 6 into 1 factor will be 6 into 1 3 into 2 like that but 6 plus 1 is 7, 3 plus 2 is 5. So, which one to be taken? 7, 6 and 1 to be taken. So, we can write here 2x square plus 6x plus x. So, that it will be 7x plus 3. Now, again, you can take common maximum. What is maximum common in first two term? Maximum common is 2x. So, we can write here 2x common and then x will be left. If I take x common and 2 also common then 6 divided by 2 that is 3 left in these two terms there is nothing common and wherever there is nothing common we can take one common and now x plus 3 are common in both so we can take it uh, x plus 3 and what is left from here 2x and what is left from there 1 and that will be answer of this question so hopefully you got it right now and next question that I am looking for here question number third and the third question is 6x square plus 5x minus 6 in this way also the first and third product 6 into 6 is minus 36 you know and now we have middle term split in which we can write it so minus 36 can be written as 36 into 1 right now factor will be 36 into 1 18 into 2 or again 12 into 3 9 into 4 these are some common factors 6 into 6 we have to look uh, look for because it is a negative term so one of them must be bigger than 5 and another one must be smaller than 5 so but think which two of them is suitably um, there which sum is 5 or some or difference is 5 so of course there is difference one is bigger and another is smaller so difference of the numbers to be equal to 5 36 minus 1 is 35 36 plus 1 is 37 it won't work 18 plus 2 is 
20 and 18 minus 2 is 16. That won't work. 12 into 3 and 12 minus 12 plus 3 and 12 minus 3 not equal to 5. 9 plus 4 is 13. That not equal, but 9 minus 4 is 5. So we can break them. This one is suitable for us. And so we can break them as 9x minus 4x so that it would be 5x minus 6. Now you can take maximum common from these two. 3 is a coefficient of 6 and 9. So we can take 3 common as well and x also. So if you divide this by 3x, there will be 2x. And if you divide this by 3x, only 3 will left. Here, what is common? 2 is a factor in both, so 2 can be taken common. And if you divide by 2, 2x is left. And because negative sign is being taken, so sign inside bracket will change. And 6 divided by 2 is 3. So we can take 2x plus 3 common in these two, and there will be 3x minus 2. I hope you got it, and this is the answer of this question. Now, uh, let me discuss another question and question number 4 is there. And what is this 4 question? That is again 3x square minus x minus 4. Again you have to multiply first and third term. That is minus 12 and factor of 12 will be. So one of them is bigger and another must be smaller. So factor of them will be 12 into 1, 6 into 2, 3 and 6 into 2 and 4 into 3. But out of them, which one to be taken? Uh, the following options are there. And which one to be taken for consideration? Because one of them is bigger. So, of course, your difference will play. 12. But anyway, you can check both of them. Uh, you are learner. You can check. And after some time, definitely you will be able to write it directly. So, 12 in plus 1 is 13. And 12 minus 1 is 11. That is not equal to coefficient of middle term. 6 plus 2 is 8 and 6 minus 2 is 4 but the coefficient of middle term is minus 1 only. So 4 plus 3 is 7 and 4 minus 3 is 1. So this will be a possible only and so we can write it as 3x square minus 4x plus 3x minus 4. Minus 4x plus 3x is minus 6. And now we can take it x common from this because maximum plus 2, there is only x can be taken. So if I will take x common, there will be 3x minus 4. 3x minus 4 will left. 3x minus 4 will left. And uh, if uh, there is nothing common, so we can take x common. So 3x minus 4 is left. And uh, what is, uh, if I take 3x minus 4 common from these two, then what is left? It will left x plus 1 and that will be the answer of this question. I hope you are getting all this now. How to deal with. Just try to understand. Make them factors and uh, take the sum or difference of these two factors. If any one of them either sum or difference is equal to the coefficient of middle term. Then you should break accordingly. This is what I did here. That middle term is breaking two terms. So this is called splitting middle term. The number of questions has been discussed. Now you can solve uh, lakhs of questions like this from your own. Uh, concept building is very important and concept is built up now and you will be able to do that. Now again in the similar category there are some other questions also. Let me complete this factorize. What is that? Again there is a question one that is x cube minus 2x square minus x plus 2 that you have to factorize here again we have four question so i am looking for this what maximum can be taken common from this two is x square so what is left here x minus 2 what is maximum can be taken one and since negative things is taken common so inside that their sign will change and what will happen then this can be written as Again, x minus 2 can be taken common and x minus 2 if you take common, then what will left? If I will take x minus 2 common again, then it will left as x square minus 1 and that will be answer. Okay, so first question is that. Now second question is there. 
and that second question is given like x cube minus 3x square minus 9x minus 5. So if I will take here uh, x square common, then what will happen? x minus 3. It won't work. Here is coefficient of these two is uh, x cube minus 3x square minus 9x minus 5 it won't work so how to deal with the situation because if i'll take x square common there will be x minus 3 and there is nothing common so if i'll take minus 1 common then 9x plus 5 so that won't work so what to do in that case you will use the factor theorem put x is equal to 1 and that is by heat and trial there is no specific region in which but because all the terms are most of the terms are negative so you put x is equal to minus 1. If I put x is equal to minus 1, right now, then what will happen? This will be minus 1 because minus 1 whole cube is minus 1. Minus 1 whole square is 1. 1 multiplied with 3 is minus 3. Minus 9 multiplied by minus 1 is plus 9 and minus 5. 5 plus 3, 8 and 1, 9. 9 minus 9 is 0. And therefore, x plus 1 is a factor. Isn't it? Majaya, x plus 1 is a factor. Right? So, other factor will be what? We will divide them. x cube, now we will divide them. x cube minus 3x square minus 9x minus 5. If you divide it by x my plus 1, what will happen? x square and there will be x cube plus x square. Sign will change. This will cancel that is minus 3x square minus x square is 5x square minus 9 minus 5 so again you can write here what is that that if you write here minus 4x then that will be minus 4x then it will be minus 4x square minus 4x and the things will be here plus and that will be plus cancel here it will be minus 5x minus 5. So if I multiply by minus 5, it will be minus 5x minus 5. And sign will change. So this and this cancel. And here what is left? 0. So therefore, as we have learned the factor theorem, x cube minus 3x square minus 9x minus 5 can be written as x plus 1 x square minus 4x minus 5. Now, this is a quadratic one. We can use a splitting middle term. So, what will happen? This will be 5. Product will be 5. So, we can write it further. x plus 1. x square minus 5x plus x minus 5. Isn't it? Minus 5 plus x is minus 4x. So, it will come up like uh, that will be here. Mm. Should I write like this? Here only. Let me write this side. Hmm. x plus 1 into x square minus 5x plus x minus 5. So that will come up x plus 1. And if I took here x common, that will be x minus 5. If I take 1 common, x minus 5. So that will come. And here it will be x plus 1. x minus 5, if I would take common, then there will be x plus 1. So, these are three factors of the polynomial and that will be answer of this question. So, I hope uh, you are getting the points how to deal with this and therefore x cube we may write x cube minus 3x square minus 9x minus 5 is equal to nothing else but x plus 1 whole square you can write and x minus 5 because there are two x plus 5. So, it can be written as x plus 1 whole square and x minus 5, two factors of x plus 1. Now, the next question, that is question number third, I am taking here. And third question is also given like, okay, third question. And third question is given like x cube plus 13x square plus 32x plus 20. Again, because it is a cubic equation, so middle is splitting middle term won't work. In that case, you have to go with the factor theorem only. And because here hint is that since all the terms are positive, so here putting 
positive value of x won't work. You have just guess and check it for x is equal to minus 1. Put x is equal to minus 1. Then what will happen? That is minus 1 whole cube is minus 1. Minus 1 whole square is plus 1. Multiply by 13 is 13. And 32 multiply by minus 1 is minus 32 and plus 20. So 20 plus 1 is 33 and 33 minus 33 is 0. And therefore x plus 1 is a factor. Gentle. x plus 1 is a factor. Now we will divide it. Divide it. x plus 1 is a factor. And so we will divide it here, this side x plus 1 is a factor so we will divide x plus 1 by writing here x plus 1 and uh, that divides which one x cube plus 13x square plus 32x plus 20 right I'm writing the coefficients so what is needed here if I'll uh, divide it by x square so x square is required writing quotient in what x square then that will be x cube plus x square sign will change that will cancel 13 x square minus x square is 12 x square plus 32 x plus 20 again if you multiply by 12 x then it will be 12 x square isn't it so that will be 12 x square and uh, it is 12 x also so if I put here uh, subtract this 2 then what will happen this will cancel 32x minus 12x is 20x plus 20 and if I multiply by 20 again then this will be plus 20 then that will be x square 20x plus 20. 20x plus 20 and sign will change this will cancel and 0 is left. So, therefore, by using factor theorem, x cube plus 13x square plus 32x plus 20 can be written as x plus 1 and x square plus 12x plus 20. Now, because this is a quadratic polynomial, so here middle term will work and multiply these two first and third, you will get here uh, 20 and factor of 12 can be 10 plus 2 that is 10 into 220 so orally you can do that now because you are enough intelligent now and so you can write it x square is x plus 1 into x square plus 10x plus 2x plus 20 and that will be x plus 1 and if I took x common from these two x plus 10 and if I take 2 common then here what is left x and 20 divided by 2 will be 10 so these two will be factors also now out of these two if i take x plus 10 common then what will happen x plus 1 x plus 10 if i'll take common then x plus 2 is left and that will be the answer of this question so polynomial uh, therefore x cube plus 3x square plus 13x plus 20 is equal to this these are the three factors hopefully you got it okay now the next question is look i'm looking for that is question number four and fourth question is what that is given 2y cube plus y square minus 2y minus 1 right this is a question so i'm looking for this one taking common here again this is a cubic equation so working splitting middle term won't work but i can check here that y square is common in both so i can take y square common so what is left here 2y is left from first year first term because y square is being taken and here y square is being taken so one is left here nothing is common so we can take one common and because one is taken common so sign inside the bracket will change and now 2y plus common in both so we can take 2y plus 1 and what is left here y square minus 1 and because it is a cubic equation so there must be three factors so that is 2y plus 1 and this is y square minus 1 square you know a square minus b square is a plus b into a minus b 
So that is y plus 1 into y minus 1 and this will be the factor. So here answer will be 2y cube and therefore we can write 2y cube plus y square 2y cube plus y square let me write here therefore 2y cube plus y square and uh, minus 2y minus 1 minus 2y minus 1 has three factors 2y plus 1 y plus 1 and y minus 1 and this is your answer so this is your answer of question i hope you got it right now this one is answer so here what i have used here since a square minus b square you know that a square minus b square is a plus b into a minus b this is what i have used here a square minus b square is a plus b into a minus b this is what i have used here so you are getting the points i hope uh, you understood each and everything regarding these questions and uh, that's all in this chapter uh, this exercise not in this chapter and uh, we will discuss some more things some new things in next class till then bye bye god bless you this video is long but uh, bear with this if you are not able to see in single stretch you can take a break and watch it okay thank you